Okay, we're just going to check this out real fast. 86 is really good. If we switch sections, you'll feel a lot better. Okay, so you rocked them. They had a higher than average percentage of people be on the zoology trip, so or the zoo trip, whatever. Okay, here we go. These were intended to get more difficult the lower you went. Oh, heaven's sakes. So yeah, someone just submitted that went up. 100% of people got this right. Oh, that's for A. This is tricky. So one person got that. I've never done it this way. Do you like this better than a guru post? <laughs> All right. So this one was supposed to be pretty easy. 212 was the answer. You guys rocked it. We're not going to go over a ton of them, but we will go over this last one. Who thought the last one was harder? All right. It doesn't look like it. Okay. So that one kicked your butts. Okay. So let's do this. This one is really hard. I am aware of that. Um, on your end, do you see the A's right here, like that thing? Okay. That's good. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh. We have to move this to the top. He went to the bathroom in a cup. Here we go. What are we laughing at? This is on. Okay, here we go. Shh, shh, shh. Please, we're a little bit talky today. It's okay. So please be quiet is what I'm trying to say. Here we go. This problem is difficult because the polyatomic ion is here and... Actually, it was written H-O-H, huh? Well, hold on. All right, here we go. Let me restart this then. This one's hard because O-H is here and it's over here, but the problem is it's also broken into two parts as well. So if your polyatomic ion... If it breaks apart at all, which it has, do you see this O? The only place it could have come from is here. Then you have to treat everything separately. You can't balance OHs this time. So here we go. When in doubt, start with what? The metal. That will make this problem significantly easier if you follow that little piece of advice. There's two ALs, so most everybody put a two there and they were, they were correct. So that 2 makes how many O's now? 6 O's. And how many H's? 6 H's. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to fix the H's. There's one here and one here. So what do I need to put in front of this? A 3. How many O's does that make right here? 3 plus how many other O's? 3. And that does equal 6. So now I'm ready to go. 2, 1, 3. Well, it's because I've done this for 16 years. Um, so, I know. So I better dang well be better at it. <laughs> I'll be better at it more than you before. <laughs> Radio edit there. Um, all right. So the next plan, or the next thing on our plan was combustion reactions. Oh, that's terrible. All right. These... These are hard, but they will become very easy. So in your notes, put the word combustion reaction. That is two word, whatever. On, here we go. Combustion reactions can be the very hardest things that we do, unless you do what I tell you. So this is your mantra here. Don't think, just do. All right, that is not your parents motto <laughs> so what you're going to do here i'm going to have you write down these four things start with the two balance carbon balance hydrogen and please look shh, shh, shh. this little piece right here in red that goes with the hydrogen and balance oxygen take two minutes and write that down
Okay, so these rules, they only apply to what we call combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are pretty easy to recognize. They always start with a C and an H, and there'll be a number here, a number here, and those are the only things that change. The rest is always the same. That's why we can always follow the same rules. So a combustion reaction is when we are burning what we call a hydrocarbon or an organic molecule if you're in some sort of biology course. We react the hydrocarbon with oxygen. It releases heat, light, and other forms of energy. Most of you used gasoline to get here and you used natural gas or propane to heat the water you took a shower in. Both of those, or all of those, come from combustion of a hydrocarbon. Okay, now, looking at the four steps I just had you do, we're going to balance a simple um, combustion reaction. And it's, it was in the notes. I'm trying to remember which direction. I think it's this way. Yeah, it was this one. Do you have that somewhere in your notes? Yeah. All right, so here we go. We're going to balance that reaction, which I will rewrite, so don't worry. It's C6, H6, plus O2, goes to CO2, plus H2O. Will you tell your lab partner for 10 seconds how you know this is a combustion reaction? Ready, set, go. We're going to balance it. That's what we're going to do. All right, ready? That was a long 10 seconds. But because it's always O2, CO2, and H2O, and it's always a CH, so that's how we know. So please look at the screen and just follow along with me. We're not going to think. What are we going to do? Just do. We're just going to do. So look at the screen. You start with a 2, which literally means just put a 2 at the very start. Do that, please. And then don't think. Just look back at the screen. So you're starting with the two because I tell you to. Sometimes it will turn out that you didn't need to do that, but who cares? We're doing it for speed and proficiency. So the next thing in your notes, look at the screen. All of you are looking at your paper. Look at the screen. The next thing says to balance carbons. So two times six is what number? 12, so put a 12 here, don't think, just do it. The reason I don't want you to think is sometimes you think that that 2 goes there and you do some stupid math and you get a stupid answer because you did stupid stuff because you didn't think well. All right, now, please look. The next step says to balance hydrogen. And it said in the like red parentheses, look at the screen, it said take the number with H, and put it in front of water. Don't think about it, just do it. If you think, you 95% of the time will put a 12 right there, and you'll 100% of the time get it wrong if you do that. So now, please look. These three numbers come from muscle memory, essentially. We just do it, we don't think. We put a two, we balance, we put that number there, and we're ready to roll. Okay, now, the only part that requires some brain power is finding the number of O's. So please look at the screen. Oxygen is in two places and we have to account for both. So we now have to do some math. What's 12 times 2? 24 plus, that's just this plus sign, and then there's six more because there's just a one there, right? Now, this answer is 30, but, 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 please look. Whatever number goes right here will always be doubled. So I don't put the 30 there. I put a 15 right there. 2, 15, 12, 6 is my answer. How about that? Got it? Okay. So just quickly, one more. Start with a 2. Balance carbons. 
Take the number with H, put it in front of water, balance the oxygens. So we ready for another one? Okay. So has anyone ever heard of butane? Yes. All right. Butane is C4H10. So that means this is a combustion reaction because it starts with C's and H's. You burn it in the presence of oxygen. Whoops, that's an arrow. That's an arrow. To produce CO2 and H2O. I will give you one minute to try on your own. If you're not ready to do it on your own, don't try it. We'll do it together in a second. So, I start with the 2, because Davidson said so. 2 times 4 is what number? 8. So I put it 8. What do I do with this number? You put it in front of water. Then, I have to do the math part. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 10 more. What does that equal? 26. Got to divide that in half. 2, 13... 8, 10. How, how many had that correct? Raise your hands. If you didn't, don't panic yet. We got a ton more to go. So, to review again, shh, you start with the 2. That means you double the carbon. So you take this number, whatever it is, 2 times it is, 8. Then you take the number with H put it in front of water, and then do the math. 8 times 2 was 16. 10 times 1, right there, was 10. Add them, and you get 26. Divide in half, 13. Okay. How many have heard of propane? All right, that's what you barbecue with. Propane is C3H8 plus oxygen goes to CO2 and H2O. And when you get done with this one, sure, but you don't have to. That's what I'm going to say. Sure, but you don't go. So start with a 2. 2 times 3 is what number? 6. Then this 8 goes where? In front of the water. Then we have to find this. So we have to account for all the oxygen on the right. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 8 times 1 is just 8. So that's 20. You have to divide that in half because you are going to double it right there. So this is 10. All right, so the what I said, when you get done, sure, but you don't have to. What was I saying? All right, this one can be, if you want, 1, 5, 3, Four. Both answers on the test are 100% correct. The reason why is we use these, we're going to use these ratios in math. So a 2 to 10 ratio, if you put 2 to 10 or 1 to 5 in your calculator, does it matter? They are the same thing. Okay, one more. Here we go. If you rode in a gasoline-powered vehicle, you use what you call octane, which is C8H18. We call that gasoline, but it really is octane. Octane. That, yeah. But this is what you're getting your energy from. Okay, give this a shot. We ready? So I have a 2. 2 times 8 makes this a 16. Take the number with H, put it in front of water, and then do the math. That's 32 plus 18. That's 50. Cut it in half. That's 25. These problems, you don't realize it, they're very hard, but as long as you follow the four steps, they're super easy. Sound all right? One more, or do you think you're all right? Okay, 
we're going to do one more that's a little different because that's how life is. Are we ready? Shh. Be ready. In chemistry, sometimes our hydrocarbon has another part. That's sugar. This is the... We're dang sure, Cam. Okay, now, shh. You know this. You know this reaction by a different name. Anyone know what it's called? Respiration and photosynthesis. Nice job. So look. Typically speaking, we don't talk about sugars burning. But we certainly talk about sugars giving off energy, all right? So this is respiration, um, or the inverse. And you're going to follow the same rules. Just notice there's going to be a little sliver that makes it a teeny bit different. All right, so these are not very common in AP chemistry, but just be all right. Like, we can still do the same thing. So you start with a 2. 2 times 6 is 12. You still take the number with H, put it in front of water. And then when you balance the oxygens, you just have to be aware there's already some over here. So 12 times 2 is 24, plus how many? 12. And then I'm going to put a minus. How many do I have here already? 12. I already have 12. So how many do I have on the right? 12. 24. It's okay. They're just answering what they know I'm going to ask next. Divide it in half. That's a 12. Now this can be reduced, and this will prove to you sugar is of the devil. 666. Six, six. Uh, whoa. What? Photosynthesis. Biology is of the devil. Proof. All right. Well, that's my kid. She's a doll. She is cute, but that's not what I was going for. Here we go. Um, will you look right here? Thank you. I don't think I can get it. Oh, oh, failure. We can do this. We can do it together, team. Okay, do you see this? Shh. I sent a Canvas notification over the weekend that no one saw except for one person. I had like, honestly, 10 people first hour, like, I saw it. I didn't want to do it. You don't have to tell me whether you had that feeling or not. But one person did this activity. If you were gone Friday or need any more help on balancing chemical equations, there are these two Ed puzzles, which this one, uh, both of them you can fast forward through. This one doesn't really have questions except for one, I think. The rest are just like, hey, write that in your notes. And then this one is like eight practice problems that it asks you to do it, and then the guy in the video does it right after. These are very valuable if you still need help balancing equations. They're an Ed puzzle. Before we take the test. All right. If you got a four or a five on the quiz, you don't have to do it. If you got three, two, or one, you have to do it. And it's already on your grade. If you did it or you passed the quiz, it's on your grade. So if there's nothing there, that means you haven't done it and you didn't pass the quiz. Okay, next point of emphasis. Right here. If you missed Friday, I recorded, and I record most every day that I lecture. Well, what's that? Did I? Sorry, whatever. Okay, so down here, shh. 
Chapter 3, class recordings. If you miss Friday or need help, Friday was really important. You can just click that video and you can re-watch re it or if you missed it. Okay, good enough. The class recordings are there. Okay, now, the rest of the hour... That's fine. Six minutes is great. All right. The rest of the hour, we're going to talk about what we have been doing and what we had, and they're going to come on. And they come together to make, it says, write and balance the following. This is what you All right, so it's the combination of being able to write a formula from a name and then balancing the reaction. I have six minutes to work through these. I'm going to give you a sheet at the end of the hour that you need to work on tonight. Is everyone clear on that? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. You can stay here during B time and work on it. So here we go. It says potassium is added to sulfuric acid. So what is potassium? Thank you. Is added to sulfuric acid. All right. Some of you already have this memorized, but in case you don't, ick comes from A-T-E, right? And A-T-E comes from sulfate. And that's SO4 with the minus 2 charge. Okay, so that's where that came. Now, it's not just SO4 with a minus 2. It's an acid, which means what's out front? H, and how many of them? 2. And then you're going to put an arrow, and it doesn't really say, but I'll tell you. Whatever's on the right has to come from the parts on the left. So we're going to have K, and it's going to hang out with a new friend called sulfate. What's sulfate's charge? Negative 2. What's potassium's charge? Plus 1. So it's K2SO4. Plus, what's the only other piece left? Hydrogen. Do I put an H? No, it's H2 because it's a diatomic atom. These are your diatomics. H right there. N-O-F-C-L-B-R, that's where the circle ended up being. That worked out well, whatever. But those, it's hard to see the cursor. I'm not really worried about what it looks like. But those are your diatomics, all right? So that's why K did not get a 2, because it's not diatomic. All right, then the next step would be to balance it by mass. So I have how many Ks right here? Two. So what do I need to put right here? A two. Then how many H's do I have? A two. How many do I have here? Two. SO4. One and one. So it's just two, one, one, one. Lead is what symbol? PB. Bert has a big head made out of lead. It reacts with what element? Well, first off, is PB diatomic? No. I'm going to erase this. I'm getting annoyed. PB, it's not diatomic. Oxygen is diatomic. Thank you. And it makes lead for oxide. You will be grateful for how this is. What's the charge of lead? Plus 4, because that says so. What's the charge of oxide? Negative 2. So you would think it's PB2. And why is that super nice? Because it's already balanced. Okay. 
Last one. It's phosphorus. Yo, no, it's not. All right. It's yes, it is. And it forms triphosphorus hexachloride, which sounds really complicated, but it's not. How many P's? Three. How many chlorines? Six. And then you balance. No, not four, because we don't add, we multiply. So to fix the six, we put a three. To fix this three, we put a three. And then we're done. 331 would be our three coefficients. Okay, I need to print this thing, don't I? Oh, crap. I know, that's only like five of them. Tonight, have at least five of these done. At least five. More of this. And we might start picket fences. Sorry. You all right?